So, uh, the next thing we can we need to now look at as far as the detector is concerned is uh, rise time and bandwidth of the detector. So, we come back to this width. So, we are talking about the width of the depletion layer right now. Okay. Why would the detector take some time to respond? We are talking about the response time of the detector. Why are we interested in response time of the detector or the rise time of the detector? Hmm? Let us say I am transmitting, I want to transmit 10 gigabits per second. If the detector were to receive that 10 gigabits per second, its rise time or its bandwidth should be larger than 10 gigabits per second or its rise time should be faster bandwidth should be larger. So, the question is what decides the bandwidth of the detector. So, there are two reasons uh, that can uh, delay the detector response. First reason is the time taken by the electrons or the holes to travel all the way up to the electrical contacts, which means that if I have a p n junction, I am just exaggeration, exaggerating the width. You send in photons here, you created electron holes pairs here, but these electron hole pairs have to actually uh, this way right, I mean it is a reverse biased. So, these electron hole pairs have to actually cross the junction, it has to cross the, cross the p region or n region and then it has to reach this external circuit and that may take some time. Why would that take some time? What pushes the electron or what decides that time? So, let me repeat in a p n junction the electron hole pairs are generated here. This is your depletion region and I am exaggerating this depletion region here. Regular p n junction will have very small depletion region when compared to the p region in it. So, these electron hole pair for example, has to travel through the depletion region, through this p region, go out. Of course, this conducting path will not take a lot of time. But then again it has to travel through this end region and come back to the same point that completes its one transit. Again it is reverse biased. right? So, what decides the speed with which these electrons can move? In the depletion region it is experiencing the barrier potential. right? So, there is an electric field. That electric field is sufficient to drive the uh, so, if this is negatively charged, what is the what is the uh, polarity of the electric field that is created on the left side? If this is negatively charged here in a reverse bias in the p region, the across the junction there is a electric field. What is the polarity? Is this positive or is this negative? This is negative and this side is positive. So, the electrons are attracted towards this side and the holes are attracted towards this side. So, let us track the electron. The electron has to cross this and it can cross the depletion region fast because there is a potential difference. So, that is called as drift. The drift can be fast and that drift can be controlled by changing the reverse bias voltage. But then once it reaches this end region, it has to just diffuse through the uh, material. There is no potential external potential which is trying to drive it. So, there is something called as uh, drift and there is something called as diffusion. And not surprisingly drift velocity is faster, diffusion velocity is much slower. So, the whole transit time for uh, the electron to complete the circuit is decided by drift plus diffusion. right? So, the moment, so we are try, trying to track what happens after I incident a photon. If I go in with a photon, the electron hole pair got generated, then it has to drift, diffuse and then take the external circuit. So, there is a delay there. right? So, that is the first uh, reason for the rise time or the delay or that, that limits the bandwidth of the system. Okay? And the second one is R c time constant. Which R and which c are we talking about? So, this is a p n junction again. 
and it is reverse biased and obviously when you reverse bias to take out the voltage uh, you would have a resistor maybe right a load resistor and you can take measure the voltage across this and that voltage is your uh, is proportional to the current through this resistor and the current is proportional to the uh, photon number that falls on the uh, uh, receiver. So, there is a resistance in the circuit the load resistance in the circuit this is the simplest circuit that you can use to extract the voltage uh, or photo current or voltage. So, uh, there is a resistance and what about the capacitance junction capacitance and you know across whenever you are taking a voltage across a resistor there is always a parallel capacitance right. So, it could be the capacitance across that. So, this one and the junction capacitance. So, it is a combination of these two and these are in parallel. So, you can just sum up the capacitance values. So, that is a RC time constant. So, essentially you are modeling your detector plus your load as a effective RC combination and the time constant of that RC is also going to decide how fast can your detector respond. So, we took a simplistic model V out is V o into 1 minus E power minus this is just an RC circuit model and that RC circuit model the rise time of that RC circuit for you can work it out if I have like this it is ln of 9 RC which is 2.2 RC this is what is called as 2.2 tau RC time constant that RC time constant is multiplication of R and C. So, it is like this if your uh, input is a uh, heavy side function your output is I mean this is input power ok. The output is something like this it is it has a delay with respect to the input and this rise time actually measures the time taken for it to go from 10 percent to 90 percent 10 percent to 90 percent of the peak value. And that rise time we are saying that now it has two contributions one is because of the RC time constant of the electrical circuit which includes the junction capacitance it may include the junction resistance also and the external load resistance and this also is decided by your transit time. Now, transit time is decided by both drift velocity and the diffusion velocity ok. So, that decides the um, response time of a detector. Uh, essentially you want uh, you want your T R C and T transit to be as low as possible. If I have a P n junction if I have a P n junction I want to somehow increase the width. If I increase the width then I can reduce the uh, diffusion time increase the drift time, but how do I increase the width we already discussed. I can only limit I can only increase the reverse bias voltage up, up to a particular value. So, what should I do that is where you have what is called as a P i n design where instead of just having a P and an n you create an intrinsic region in your design of the junction itself. So, intrinsic undoped region where that is a region where you do not have or that works like a depletion region for you and then you can apply a, a smaller reverse voltage your W here is much uh, larger than the W for a PN junction and so you can reduce the effective transit time. So, I is your intrinsic region hmm. So, the electron hole gets pair gets generated in the intrinsic region and there is a larger uh, I mean the way, the way it is constructed way shown in books also is that the P is here the N is here the intrinsic region is large. So, the electron hair uh, the electron hole pair is allowed to uh, experience more drift than diffusion. So, the effective time scales can be brought down ok. So, to give a uh, example for an order of magnitude let us say the width is 10 micron because it is a junction ok it is it is not a very millimeter length 
it is micrometer length. The drift velocity is 10 power 5 meter per second, okay. The drift velocity. Uh, the drift velocity V d 10 power 5 meter per second is some kind of saturated value in the sense that you have increased your reverse potential in uh, when you increase the reverse bias voltage the drift velocity increases it can increase only up to a certain value and that saturated value is given as 10 power 5 for a given semiconductor ok. So, what is the transit time corresponding to drift 10 power 5 meter per second. I mean distance is given, velocity is given. So, time will be uh, distance divided by velocity minus 11. So, seconds which is 100 picoseconds, but diffusion is 1 nanosecond for 1 micrometer that is the order of magnitude. So, tau diffusion is typically in our case 10 nanoseconds. Now, that is several orders of magnitude or that is not that is two orders of magnitude larger when compared to the drift. So, this is just to give you an order of magnitude of numbers. Is through, the through the n region. So yeah. Than no, no, this is not for p i n, this is for a regular p n sorry, this is for a p n junction. For a p n junction, if it is 1 nanosecond for uh, 1 micrometer sorry, what, what should be your diffusion time? 1 nanosecond multiplied by it is not 10 micron, uh, the diffusion time should be de dependent on this length L 1 plus L 2, L 1 plus L 2 which is quite large when compared to W and so your diffusion time takes over in a p n junction, but if you make it a p i n junction what you are doing is your L 1 plus L 2, L 1 plus L 2 you are reducing and your W you are increasing. So, in a PIN junction W goes up, so your L 1 plus L 2 comes down therefore, tau drift sorry tau diffusion you try to make it approximately equal to tau, tau drift. So, for PIN junctions tau drift is also 100 picoseconds, tau diffusion is also 100 picoseconds you try to make it almost same order of magnitude so that the system is not limited by the diffusion time. You can do it in indium gallium arsenide, the W achieved in indium gallium arsenide is about uh, 2 to 5 microns. You know there is one more thing, we were talking in uh, relative terms about drift and diffusion. But overall, if you were to reduce your tau transit, if you want the tau transit, tau transit to be reduced, what would you want in a bigger picture? You would want the width to be, of course, you want this width to be relatively larger than your uh, p n junction width. But overall you want that width to be smaller also because you do not want the electrons to be spending time trying to either drift or diffuse, you want it to come out of the system. So, my bigger goal is also that my W has to be smaller ok. So, what are the conditions that we are talking about? W should be small so that tau drift also is small and also that not just W should be small, you should also need a p i n configuration. So, that tau drift the small tau drift is almost equal to tau diffusion 
Am I making this clear? You want the electron hole pairs to be generated and you want them to come out of the system first. You want them to come out of the system first, so overall the width has to be smaller. Then that brings us to the trade off. What is the trade off? As my W goes down, remember what happens to the responsivity? So, as W decreases, my responsivity starts reducing because my alpha w starts uh, reducing. So, e power minus alpha w starts increasing. So, my responsivity drops. So, what is the trade off between responsivity and bandwidth? You cannot have both of them high. You do not want the electrons to spend time in the inside the semiconductor. So, you want the W to be small. Of course, given that the diffusion time is almost you have taken care of the fact that the diffusion time is almost the same as the drift time. You still want your W to be small. So, that the electron takes a very less time inside the semiconductor comes out of the system and so it can give a response as quickly as the input. But as you reduce the width, you are also reducing the absorption. You are also reducing the fact that the photons instead of falling on a larger area, now the photons are falling on a smaller area. So, you are reducing the absorption. When you are reducing the absorption, that takes a hit on the responsibility. So, that is always a trade off. So, not only should you look at the data sheet for responsivity, you have to also look at responsivity and also the corresponding bandwidth. Okay. So, bandwidth and responsivity together decides which detector to use. Suppose your uh, uh, you know the bandwidth is very high, you want to have a 40 gig detector, which means that my uh, transit time should be very, very small which means that my width has to be very small. So, when the width is very small, I may have a poorer responsivity. So, if you look at the responsivity of a 40 gig detector versus a responsivity of a, a 10 gig detector versus a responsivity of a 1 gig detector, you will see the numbers are different because the design itself is different. Right? So, whenever we talk about responsivity, we cannot universally say it is 0.8, it is 1 or 1.2 or so on. It depends on bandwidth it depends on wavelength. Hmm? Because uh, how do people design uh, detectors of different bandwidths? Fundamentally the device design changes, the device design changes you know you will uh, start changing your responsivity also. Okay? So, you have to really look at the data sheet cleverly to find out at what bandwidth, what responsivity are you talking about. 